Welcome, boys and girls, to Patch Notes 4. Hey, everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is time for Patch Notes. It's Patch 410. We're with, here with Ka. Ka, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, except for this is a very, very long patch. So, this might take a little bit of time. Anyways, what we do during patch notes is we talk about the patch, we let you know what's important, what isn't important, we let you know about all the big changes happening to League of Legends. Ah. Throw over here. It's backwards on my screen. Ah. It's backwards on my screen, too. All right, anyways, so League of Legends, patch 4.10. What we're going to do is we're going to dive right on in. So, there's tons of changes. We got changes to, like, seriously, a little bit of everything. Like, yep. you, you, you mentioned it, it's in here. Starting off with Nidalee. There's lots of things. First off, she's got new visual things. Hooray for that. We might skip a few of the very tiny things because it's a long patch. General, all of Nidalee's Cougar abilities scale with ranks. Um, and now you have your passive Prowl at level 1 now as well. So moving through brush increases Nidalee's movement speed by 10% for 2 seconds. Increased to 30% towards visible enemy champions within range of 550. Zero, zero, five, five, zero, zero. So increased towards the enemies. It's for chasing. Hooray. Um, that's movement. Now, hunted, damaging champions with javelin toss or bushwhack marks them as hunted for four seconds, granting Nidalee vision of them for, and then she gets that 30% increased movement speed towards them. Once again, it's that range. Um, yeah. And enhancing her next takedown, pounce, or swipe. So, it's new passive. Nidalee is going to be changed completely with this. So, um, this is a rework, in case you don't understand what we're going over. First, okay, let's talk about her Q, her javelin toss. Well, the first things they're doing with this... Um, is they're changing its minimum and maximum damage and its ability power and how it scales. They're changing its range. Um, damage caps out though now at 1300 range, so a little bit different there. It applies the hunted debuff to champions for four seconds. Obviously that's going to go work with her passive, so then when she's in cougar form. Um, Cooldown on six seconds, mana costs go up as it goes in level, and the myth, myth blah, 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 missile width of it is actually cut in half. A little bit harder to land these now. I personally think this is a great change. You don't know how many LCS matches I've watched where teams are getting killed and picked off by Nidalee Spears that don't hit them. Yeah, this, it's, it's maybe stupid. Taylor will be able to dodge one now. Yeah. Um, this will separate change. good Nidalees from bad Nidalees, I think. Yeah, but then again, it all, it, it, they also brought down the damage numbers a whole bunch. They like, did. maximum damage on Spear before was like, I think it was like 570 or something. Yeah. And, and the AP ratio was 1.6 so they, they toned down the maximum damage quite a bit so even if you do get hit with one of these so they're hard to hit and they do less damage um which is much needed because she could two hit somebody ja javelin toss or one hit someone yeah javelin toss was just a little bit it just made the game not fun when you got behind because they could literally just protect Nidalee and she could jack spears in your face the whole time. Yeah, it's it's a bad mechanic to the game. It involves yeah. it involves no gameplay. It involves you running backwards and them just standing in front of her as she just throws Dip, them. At dive, duck, dodge. Dip, dive, duck, dodge. Yeah. Okay. So that's her javelin toss. So changes to that. I think this is good. It's still gonna do plenty of damage. One point two ability power ratio on four hundred and fifty max damage is still gonna hurt. It's not gonna like just only tickle. Mm -hmm. Anyways, next is her W. That is her uh, bushwhack. Now, next, what's happening here is it'll apply that haunted debuff on champions. Um, the magic damage on that is going to be that amount plus the current health of the champion, plus 1% for every 50 ability power over the next four seconds. The duration of these, they're on the map for two minutes now. Two minutes. Instead of, instead of four minutes? I think four minutes. It might have been longer was, at one point. It was four minutes. Um, cost of them, right there for you, 40 to 60 as it scales. Cooldown, 17 seconds, scaling down to 9. And then uh, only affects one target per trap. So that's the bushwhack. And then... Um, so mm -hmm. they took away the armor, the armor magic, magic reduction. Yeah. And then they also added the current health. Yes. So I think the current health could be pretty hit, like pretty huge because... On big like, targets. You just, they're just wards, basically. Like, you just throw them in a bush, and if the jungler walks over them, they're already almost half dead by the time they come, you know? And it's pretty nice. It's just, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's it, that crazy. could help. That actually means it might help a little bit more late game. I like that. Yeah. Next, we have a Primal Surge. Heal on that is 45 to 205.5 ability power ratio on that for scaling for the heal. Attack speed bonus scales from 20 to 60%. Cost is 60 mana up to 140, and the cooldown on it is 12 seconds. So. so base heal will go up 
ability power will go down. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I I like it though because they actually nerfed it in their early levels because before you could just like get like two points and heal level like level what four. Yeah. And just like never be even threatened to come out like to get no, out of lane. So completely safe. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. Good. Good change good. overall. I think. Next, her R aspect of the cougar. Um, this is our ultimate. Um, once again, you're going to be able to put four ranks into it. Um, you get it at rank one, costs nothing to use. Got a cooldown of three seconds to switch back and forth out of cougar form. Um, so her Q on her cougar form is take down the hunted bonus. The first takedown targeted a hunted champion deals 33% increased damage. Um, utility wise, Nidalee gains 75 attack range for takedown attack. The minimum damage is 4 to 90 with a 0.24 ability power ratio scaling. Maximum damage is 10 to 225 with a 0.6 ability power ratio. It does not cost anything to use, it has a 5 second cooldown. But they took away the execution off of it. They did. Which is good. And it's not, mag or it's not it's magic damage now. So. It used to be physical. Luke. Nidalee is gone. Okay, yeah. so... AD Nidalee is gone. Something I want to kind of touch on is with like the R, uh, with your being able to use your ultimate level 1. You said something about Jace, but Nidalee is kind of a different animal, no pun intended, because... <laughs> Thanks for like, you. You can just, yeah, sorry, I had to. <laughs> I know, you can good. just R off the start, and a lot of people like to take W just for like, especially in like LCS matches, you can get down vision control of an area before the other team even gets to the like in their jungle before that team even gets to their area so you're gonna you're gonna alt to start take w pounce your way over to like that little gap by red butt or like by the wraiths and just like throw down a a w so you'll know they're starting red or blue yeah. I, I i don't know the, I like she that. might turn into a roamer now we'll see yeah um but yeah that's what, what that's what we're saying so let's go ahead and move to her w um, they pounce uh, directly towards Honda Champions we have a range of 700 uh, killing a unit in Cougar form reduces the cooldown of pounce to one second um, Nilly now pounces in the direction of her cursor <laughs> that's a huge change yeah so now you won't jump backwards when you're facing forwards yes it's stupid um, I'm glad they fixed that um, magic damage on that 50 to 200 with a 0.3 ability power ratio no cost to use it, 5 second cooldown and then her swipe let's talk about that quick, hunted bonus the first swipe that damages a hunted champion reduces the cooldown of pounce to 1 second basically they want you to pounce around a lot utility nidalee now swipes in the direction of the player cursor, once again makes sense, magic damage on that is 70 to 250 with a 0.45 ability power ratio and it costs nothing and it has a 5 second cooldown so, the main thing these damage numbers aren't huge to be honest, they're really not but what they Overall want you nerf, is they want them yeah. to be hunted. They want you to be using your passive to then jump in, pounce, hit them, pounce, hit them, pounce, hit them, pounce, you know, over and over. Yeah, so essentially you're going to, you're going to be more of a stick champion than a Than just a poke. Champion. And you'll have some pokes still. It's not like yeah. your spears aren't going to do anything. They're still going to, you'll still get last hits with them when people are running away with quarter health and stuff like that. It's fine. You just aren't going to 80% them with one spear. Another thing is, um, yeah. when you hit 611 and 16, like, you're going to have ginormous damage spikes because you get technically levels in every single one of your levels. Yes. Your, your Q, W, and E. So, yeah. Her, her dagger form could be pretty strong. Cougar form. So, so that is Nidalee. We'll have to see how this all pans out. I'm not, I'm not willing to say anything about it yet, really. Um,. I think it makes sense, though. I this is actually the first time that they've reworked a champion, and I have actually kind of understood the direction that they're taking the champion. Yeah. So I, I, I'm i very interested to see how this is going to kind of shake out. Yeah. But look who's next. It's Skarner. Yeah. We're back for our second update. <laughs> second rework that still didn't fix anything. They did tweak some of his visuals, so uh, new icons for all that. Now you're going to look better by, while being useless. No, hopefully they fix things. So, okay, his passive, new um, Venom on that. Your damaging spells cause a Crystal Venom debuff to enemies and large minions for five seconds. Utility of Skarner lends a basic attack on the target. With three stacks of the Venom, he will deal an additional 20 to 105 match damage and the stun the target then for 0.5 or 0.75 or one second. 
depending on how your level is. And then um, after being stunned, target cannot be debuffed by it for six seconds. Makes sense. It's just so you can't, it's like the Uter stun, you can't do it to the same person two times in a row. You gotta wait that time. So that's your passive. So this gives him some stickiness back because there's that slight stun in there. Um, you have to hit him three times, apply three venom yeah, but, but though, and then auto. I'm, yeah, we're getting to the other parts. We're just saying it's it's coming back a little bit. Basic attacks on his Q is Crystal Slash. Reduce its cooldown by 0.5. Doubled against champions, though. So each one will reduce it by one. The energy on that uh, Crystal Energy now additionally grants 3 to 7% movement speed per stack. Once again, allowing you to stay sticky to them. Not necessarily slowing them, but keeping you quick. Um, base physical damage on that... Um, is a little bit lower actually, but the bonus magic damage on that is also lower. And I actually think that makes sense to be honest. If you looked at it previously, it actually was the only part of his kit that was okay. So they the took the, da away the, the damage only part that was good. No, no, the damage though. The damage was good. Um, yeah. The other parts of it weren't good. So this I like the, I like the utility part of it now, and they just tweaked the numbers. That's fine. Um, I'm letting it slide for now. The W crystalline exoskeleton is uh, cooldowns now are just gonna be shorter. That's a good thing. Um, it was up. It was that's too long of a cooldown. Um, for similar, what you got. Similar to Nautilus's passive when they tweaked that and made it shorter. Mm -hmm. um, and then on fracture, this now does less damage as well. Cooldown on it though is 12 seconds at all ranks, so it's actually gonna be up quicker. Um, but these things are scaling from ability power. I don't really care about that. And I don't think you're using your fracture for damage anyways. Uh, um, just a slow. Just a slow. Um, Impale. Impale consumes all stacks of the Venom and deals 50, 75, or 100 magic damage per stack consumed. So that actually can deal, you know, okay. 300 damage. Yeah. And then it has a cooldown. It's being reduced on it. Um, so they touched his Q mostly. And they reduced the cooldown on Exo, and on Fracture, they still and on his Exo's ultimate. problem. I we'll see how the new passive fixes things. It's the new passive that has the opportunity to bring him back to where he had that nonstop mega slow. That was too broken though, old Skarner. Well, the consta I, slow you was say ridiculous. It was broken, but like the thing that you have to have when you're a jungler now. I can't even think of a good jungler that. You have to have a gap close, or you have to have a long range done. So you like Elise has cocoon, Pantheon has his little like jump thing. Viking gap uh, close and knock. Vi has her alt and Sin her Q. Sin Shao slides in and knocks up. Sin Shao slides slows. in. Like everyone has a gap close, and I'm sorry, but exoskeleton like crystalline exoskeleton is he's, W is not a gap. Close. He's in the he's in the uh, he's in the realm of Udir. Yeah, it's the same problem with Udir. So, you gotta get in there quick, and you gotta get the stacks to stun them. Um, like I said, I'm interested to see how this works. I think it'll be better than his current state. I think he's still gonna be a non-play champion. I yeah, I still don't think he's gonna be played though. My biggest issue with him is he's got a really crappy Warwick ult. He has a crappy what? Warwick ult. Oh, yeah. Because you have to run in to go use it. Because because Warwick has Warwick just that jumps to location. Close. Yeah, he gap closes with his, so it's not a problem. You show up in lane, by the time they see you, you're already doing this on their face. Yeah. Well, well, you usually have to not have to flash in, but like if you really want to get it and drag them out away from an area, you gotta use it that way, which is unfortunate. So, yeah. um, I think that's a big issue with them. So, right, if you're watching this, fix his ultimate. Yeah. Or put like a huge range on it where you like throws it out and grabs them and drags them back and count that as it dragging them instead of he has to go get them and then drag them where he wants them. Have him so grab them from distance and and like like a massive rake that then holds them for a second. I have a quick question. That would so is this just a passive on his ultimate? So will it still have its normal damage numbers but just if you have I think, I think, so. I think it? so. It'll add additional damage to his ultimate. So you so you essentially could do 500 damage. It's better. Like base with this all. Makes Which is that makes sense. A lot. No, that makes sense though. That's a good amount. Yeah. So, hopefully this That's helps. That's not better than I thought it was. All right. Next we have Galio. Magic resist per level for Galio has been blah blah blah. So general, his magic resist per level instead of zero is one point two five. Um, which is pretty. pretty which is huge. pretty awesome because it's passive. If you don't know, for the amount of magic resist he has, he gets ability power. Fun stuff. So he's but... gonna naturally. So he'll naturally get AP. Yeah. Which is fun. Galio's fun, but 
He's just. It's not. He doesn't have an awesome place, but yeah, he's fun. Yeah. Next is Gragi. He's got his drunken rage, new fermented passive. Gragas no longer loses the damage reduction if he is interrupted during his drink. Updated that tool is tip. super good for support Gragas, which is the only place that he should be played. Yes, right now. Yeah. Although he, I have seen him do okay top. No, you haven't. I have. It's weird. Only when no, you, only when they're going up against Scion or someone top. I haven't seen a Scion in years. <laughs> Um, next is Karthus. We're following up on his visual update with some bug fixes. So mostly bug fixes. Whoa! That was the wrong button. Um, lay waste, more vision than it actually did. While pain, VO no longer looks interrupted by movements. Added screech. That's one huge thing, though. Like, I couldn't tell when I was getting Requiemed. It's like, it, it wasn't super, super noticeable. It was different looking. I, I notice it now, but yeah, they yeah. needed to. They, a good tweak on it made sense. Yeah, so now it'll be easier to Zanya's and stuff like that, so... Yeah, um, that's Karthus, just bug fixes mostly. Now, some pretty big changes to LeBlanc, actually. Her Sigil of Silence is now called Sigil of Malice. It's because it no longer silences. They've removed that, which is good. It'll allow for counterplay, so it you will. won't just get Q-W'd and then, like, instantly she's just going to be disappeared. Or um, she gets so like, to do whatever she wants for another second because you're just standing there silent. You can't flash. You can't do anything. It's just free. And gets, and, gets free autos And QWW, off. to jump back, is the world's easiest trade for any player. It's it's a broken mechanic, once again. It, it brings nothing to the game. Mm -hmm. So I think this is really good. Like, good Ori players will be able to just, like, poop on the blunt now. So I mean, not poop on them. But if they're good, well, yeah, good Ori player. Good, good, good Ori player, player should be able to just kind of manhandle the blunt now that they don't have... That silence. That silence so. is a killer, though. It was so dumb. She she still does absurd damage levels two through six. I oh, still yeah. think that they need or three through six. They need to fix her W damage numbers. Remember when it was all about your Q? Yeah, because just like W, you just double distortion on people and like half life them, and you don't even have to Q anybody. Yeah. So. It was dumb. I agree. Yeah. LeBlanc, thank you for that change. Next, we have Lucian. His W, his Ardent Blaze. Its bonus attack damage ratio is being scaled back to 0.3. Not a huge issue. It's his Ardent Blaze. I thought that they were going to nerf this guy. That kind of is a small one, but... But most of the time, people level that <laughs> last. Yeah, I know. It's not a huge so, issue. yeah. But, I mean, I think... I think what they're, they're... I don't know how I feel is Lucian's only good if you're good. I don't know. Lucian is pretty easy he's, to just stomp people. <laughs> he's, yeah, kind of. He's not like Kate. He's not a safe pick like Well, Kate Remember when everybody like, said he was weak when he came out? And I laughed in the faces of most people because it's like he's like. Oh, they have changed him since. I'm much then. better Quinn. Yeah. I'm much better Quinn. <laughs> much better. Well, What's I Quinn? just mean like he can control his double shot. Who is Quinn? Who is Quinn? Quinn, you, you mean that top lane champion? Is Quinn later in the notes and it says we changed her ultimate, so it works with teams now. So they just completely reworked her ultimate. Yeah, pretty much. That'd be great. Uh, next is Pantheon. Grand Skyfall. Fixed a bug where he could use summon Thank spells before landing. Most notably, Flash could be used before landing to reposition. Yeah. Good tweak. They didn't want that happening. Sh shouldn't happen. Shouldn't have been able to happen in the first place. No. So, tweak there. Next is Sivar. Hmm. Her mana is going to be up by four. Her mana per level is going up actually by seven. And mana regen per level is 0.9 per five seconds instead of 0.5. So she's going to be a little more mana efficient. Um, I thought her E doesn't cost any mana. They just it doesn't. Want, they just want to allow her, her to Q, Q. Her Q costs like seven bajillion mana. It's yeah, like half your mana bar. It's like Blitz Crank Grab. I was going to say, I don't think it's cheap. So yeah probably probably not too bad so uh yeah. i'm okay with that it brings another adc to the table next is thresh apparently when thresh big attack or chat and flay we call the wrong buff i kind of changes clarity oops okay so hers flay now displays the correct buff icon bug fix cool no changes tristana rocket jump now 60 mana at all ranks instead of 80 and now more accurately checks for nearby landing spots when jumping close to or over walls instead of fail jumping basically so okay we can keep going and then buster shot range now scales with level that's kind of cool 
But it's the same thing as like her passive. Yeah. I think it scales e. like her passive. I think that's cool. So wait a second. Tristana's been very, very weak for a long time, and this is what they decided to change. They, they tweaked her. They tweaked her um, a yeah, while they ago, made, and they, they gave her, what? her attack speed free. Her attack speed free. Woo! You Woo! get one point in that. Most people don't even get a point in that no, until you have to. Yeah, there's no reason, really. Just hold on. I'm so, my shoulders out. Oh, there we go. I'm surprised that they didn't add the, or like, show the... Yeah, I don't know. That's icons. whatever. I don't know. This will, th you know how sometimes then they are just bringing these champions slowly back up in strength? Well, I don't know. Tristana is one of those champions where if you give her AD ratio, she's just going to destroy the game. Like, exactly. you pick Tristana and you, like, automatically win. Yeah. So, I understand why she's AP, but I don't know. I don't know. I think they could tweak her, but maybe they'll just slowly move her up so she doesn't just come out absurd. Um I think they've been trying to fix that a little bit more with champion releases, not to be completely broken upon release or their reworks. <coughs> Sorry. Cough. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll have to look it up later. Um, Trinomir. New icons have been added for his abilities. Cool Ooh. story. Twitch. General is base damage is going down three points. Passive deadly venom. True damage is going down instead of two to eight. It's going to be one to six. Six at levels one, four to sixty. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So, that's fine. Level ones are so hard to beat Twitch. But that's because of like, Twitch is really good because you never will get out traded because you always have you always have that like bunge expunge or and whatever true damage you call it now. ticking. It's expunged. Yeah. But Isn't like, it? he's going to have the one of the lowest base ADs in the game now. It'll be pretty low, but that's... I mean, it kind of makes up for it with the true damage. Quick trivia. Do you know who the highest in base AD is? Highest base AD is... I'm gonna... I'm gonna... No, it can't be. It can't be him. Hold on. Let me think for a second. I'm trying to think <laughs> of the... I'm trying to think <laughs> of the never ADs. Guess it. It's oh. Mail Kai. Oh, I was thinking ADCs. Oh no! Overall, it's the tree the has tree? the highest AD. Why do I think I actually? I was looking up a bunch of stats the other day, and I thought I saw something weird about him. Well, he needs it, but that's Twitch. Oh, ambush! Also, timing to stealth without taking damage is now one and a half seconds, not one point two five seconds. Um, so split second longer. That's um, that's not that big of a deal, but the the three to six seconds is. Yeah, then stealth timing while being hit in the face. I love that. Uh, maximum time to stealth while taking damage now is six seconds. I honestly feel like I think that makes sense though, personally. Well, but it's it does it's gonna be and tough. It doesn't. So like, if you get hit once, it's six seconds. What I think they should do is just make it so if you're getting hit, you can't go invisible. Yeah, no, it makes like sense. Like it's one point five seconds after the last time that you got hit. <laughs> and there it is. And knowledge. And knowledge drop. Boom. Right, are you listening? No, just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. That's Twitch. Um, I actually now think it's a little more interesting they didn't do more to Lucian if they're nerfing Twitch. Because Lucian's been, like, super, like, legitimately strong for a long time, and people just kind of realize, like, happened upon Twitch because of the Koreans. <laughs> Thank you, Korea. <laughs> Thank you for Kale Build. Now we're going to see Ash back in the LC. <laughs> Oh god. No, no, it's not happening. Ash Zyra. OP. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Um Ash Brahm. Slows and slows. Um <laughs> Zed. Deathmark. No longer teleports to a random location if Zed <laughs> marks someone who's in the middle of a dash. Interesting. Bug fix. I didn't know that was a problem. I didn't know either. I, I, don't I hadn't Zed. seen that before, so. That's funny though. Um if he marked like Vi during a world's longest flash alt. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really funny. Um, offensive physical itemization. All right, so there's lots of changes happening to anything that's built from the best friend sword. Don't we think we should just switch or, like, skip this opening yeah. ensemble? So, f new item is the essence 
Brief. <laughs> I haven't read any of this. <laughs> Nobody knows. Unique Seriously. passive. You gain 2 to 8% of the damage dealt by physical attacks as mana. This effect increases based on how much mana you are missing. Gives you 50 attack damage, 10% lifesteal, 10% cooldown reduction. The recipe is a vampire acceptor pick axe and 975 gold. Its total cost is 2650. This will be good on champions who use lots of mana, although I don't see anybody buying this immediately. I see Blue Build Ezreal becoming one of the primary AD Shit. carries. Except for that. Because the mana back is obviously huge. The attack damage, there was no mana item like this that gave attack damage, lifestyle, and cooldown reduction. Like, those three things could, are Could are this Blue help Ergot? No. Okay. Ergot's... Ergot needs more than an item. <laughs> to, I'm just... I'm just I'm, unless he has, a like, a... Like a Victor staff that only he can buy and like gives him like a bajillion attack damage and he might be okay. There it is. All right, so, next. This oh. is gonna be huge on Blue Build Ezreal. I expect to see this. I like Ezreal like, right still. away. I still think he's fun. I still think he's one of the funnest to play. So, um, although the other uh, the other Ezreal build still works really well too. Um, oh yeah. Although we'll I'm not saying that the, the up, like the Trinity Force build can't work. I'm just saying that this will give rise back to. That's blue build. the blue build Ezreal works better late game nowadays. Um, and well, yeah. if you build this like first or what, you would have to build this second. You build tier. This is gonna get nerfed because of this. He's gonna come into lane and spam so much, it's gonna be insane. He'll be yeah. stacking a tier at the same time as having this, and he'll you won't be able to turn him off. It'll be stupid. Yeah. So prepare for a nerf. I'm just predicting it. If I'm wrong, whatever. I'm usually not. If, but <laughs> at the same it. time, if I, I hate it when they do this. I hate it when they nerf items based on one champion's usage. Yeah, I kind of agree, but it makes sense, though. Can you think of any other champion that would use this effectively like Ezreal? <laughs> Ergot? <laughs> Touche, Ergot. Ergot. Um, no. There's nobody else. Blue build Urgot. I don't know, unless somebody did a weird Ash build nowadays. Could where be. you wanted to have the constant slow Q. Oh my god, you would have constant slow Q. You would never run out of mana because you'd get the exact same amount back. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Interesting. We'll see how this plays out. Next is the Doran's Blade. The life on hit has been removed. They actually put the lifesteal back on it. It's 3% now. Health is going down to 70, though, and the uh, attack damage is going down to 7. So. A um, little bit of a reduction there, but I tell you what, the three percent life deal, I, will, I, I'm, I like it. So, I it's actually less early, but more late. Yeah, I don't. This change will allow people to fight. Man, they're screwing like, with. They, they they can pick up two Doran's blades and be good on sustain, and then pick up like Infinity Edge. Be prepared. Yeah, well, that was the old school build, which I actually really well, like. You're gonna yeah, you're gonna see a rise of. Well, we'll, we'll see. We're gonna get to, we're gonna get to those in a second. We'll get to that in a second. The other oh, thing okay. the other thing to take note is you might see less life steal runes, so people will bring more damage to lane. Mm, you yeah. might you, they attack, might only take well, one or two now instead of the thing three, that people have started time. doing is taking attack speed quints because it's the highest scaling into late game for an 80 carry so like you're gonna walk like, your lane I like early game power on my 80 carry well i understand but like if you're gonna be a champion that forfeits early game anyway like Vayne or someone like that oh you yeah might as that well makes sense. Just scale uncontrollably like varus is really good with attack speed oh yeah, he's I, insane I, with it yeah I, I i know that both those champions have kind of fallen out of the meta but with these changes we don't really know what the 80 carry meta is going to be yeah We'll have to see how it'll how it'll change things. I actually think Vayne's gonna be huge. In this. Um, Vampire Scepter lifesteal and that's going down to eight percent. Bill's Water Cutlass once again because of changes to Vamp going down to eight percent. Actually, not twelve anymore. They still have some interesting game changing to top lane status for survivability. Um, Blade of the Ruined King active ability maximum health damage now is ten uh, percent, not fifteen. It's the yeah the active okay the active yeah the active ability nearby champions reduce their movement speed only by twenty five now instead of thirty percent current damage per hit now is eight percent not five percent so that's going up but the life steal on it once again is actually going to go down it's only going to be ten percent um, so less survivability from Blade of the Ruined King um, I think Blade of the Ruined King not all the time but so, for a while there was was purchased too much too often too soon. Well, when it first came out, you bought it on everybody. Yeah. But what 
what confuses me about this, like, I know this is a little bit farther ahead, but, like, attack speed's getting buffed on, like, daggers and stuff. Yeah. So I'm surprised that they... Did they buff it? Yeah. Yeah, they... I'm surprised that they didn't buff it on Blade. Um, it's probably because it's already really good. Yeah, it's probably good. And they made it better by giving it 3% more Yeah, they gave it 3% damage. more damage, which is why I don't think they did. Yeah. There's just, so. That's just too much. So yeah. that's Blade. Um, not crazy, crazy. Next is the Bloodthirster. Its passive has been removed. It no longer grants out a bonus attack damage or lifesteal. Um, but now, Bloodthirster's passive, lifesteal can now be um, overheal, granting a bloody shield that absorbs 50 to 450 damage based on the champion level. The shield does decay um, when you're out of combat for 15 seconds. Um, attack damage on it, instead of it being a base 70, is now going to be 80. The lifesteal is going to be um, 15 instead of 12 because it's not going to scale up to 20. And then its total cost is actually going to go up another 250 gold. So um, you get more damage, it doesn't scale. You get more lifesteal, but it doesn't scale. So and it, and, it, and it costs more gold. And it costs more gold. Um, this is them pr- trying to prevent the first buy Bloodthirster on everybody. Because that's what you pretty much buy on everybody. You get a Bloodthirster because it's well, tons for, of damage, people, it's tons of sustain. Yeah, for people that have super high AD ratios, you win Bloodthirster. For people who didn't, like Tristana, Vayne, Kogma, you built Blade. So I... I understand what they're trying to do, but what I'll be interested to see is the bloodthirst, like the new passive on it. Mm-hmm. Like, is it one hit when you're at full health you get that shield, or do you have to hit something as many times as it takes for the amount of life steal that you would have to get to that? Because uh, 450 life steal is like four hits, or yeah. like five hits. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna go, you have to go, essentially what four seconds in a fight without taking damage. Well, hopefully passive. you were farming off of something 15 seconds, within the last 15 seconds, or shooting something and, and proccing it. I guess that that's probably what they're hoping for, but... It's, I don't, a, I don't. it's an interesting utility that, obviously, I think, once again, good players will utilize. The other thing that this does do, though, since it doesn't scale anymore, so there's no punishment for dying and losing stacks, is it is it, it does the equal playing field thing again, where... The enemy ADC may have the same item as you, and now that you killed them, they didn't lose stacks, so you're still on the same same, same bar for damage. So now essentially they've made it, so you either pick early or late game. Like, Bloodthirster is strictly an early game item, and uh, Blade of the Rune I don't King. think it necessarily is now. Well, Blade's going to scale better, just because of the... 8%? Because of who you're hitting. Like... Yeah, because like when team fights happen, Blade's gonna be much more useful against tanks than Bloodthirster is. And but like in lane, if you have a blade to a Bloodthirster, you're gonna get crushed. Like you, you're gonna get crushed. We'll have to I see think. what the. This is one of those things where like I don't play a lot of ADC anymore, which I don't miss to be honest. You're obviously gonna have to start doing that. No, not even a little. All these changes. I'm just gonna wait for LCS. Just to just see what they're doing and see who, who's going to rise to the top. It's the same you reason why the like I ignore making certain... I don't ignore making certain builds or reworks, but like... ADCs are dumb because almost all of them build the same. Like, I can make one and be like, apply to everyone except for Ezreal. You know, like... You know, something like that. So... Because like right now, seriously, do you want an ADC build? Here's one quick. Buy a Bloodthirster, get a Stag Shiver, Phantom Dancer, pick up a Last Whisper, get an Infinity Edge, game over. You know, like... Get Phantom Dancer. Get a Phantom Dancer or a Shiv, depending on two circumstances. Get a Phantom Dancer. Depending on the circumstances. If you want the clear, though, you gotta take Shiv. Well, if you don't, what AD clear? What can you think of an AD carry yes. that doesn't have clear? Well, I mean, like super fast push clear. Like if Jinx, you're poke, maybe poke comp clear is what I'm talking about. Like when you're running the Nidalee and you were running Caitlyn, Caitlyn would pick up the Shiv so you guys could Uber clear the wave to keep the poke up, because she could Uber clear with a Pilt over one standard attack. And uh, the shit bounce. Dead. Yeah, because because as the piltover goes through, it scales its damage off. It doesn't kill the last one. You standard attack the first minion. The stack shift goes through all of them and kills them all. It's a two shot wave. It's stupid. So that's the only time. I'm just saying that's the only time. So although I like stack shift because it makes a funny noise. Anyways, continuing on. Attack damage items. So the BF sword, the infinity edge, everything like this. BF sword now is 50 attack damage instead of 45. The infinity edge now has a base of 80 damage along with the mercurial scimitar because once again BF. So we're just getting that increased uh, attack damage basic. And then now on Mercurial Scimitar, the um, 
ability, active ability now grants movement speed bonus to ranged characters as well. It also that's, costs more gold now. So. That's going to be a legit item, I think. 20 more attack damage as well as movement speed when you cleanse is huge. That's pretty big characters. because they're going to be changing another item, I think, coming up. Ooh. So that's we'll talk cool. about that's, this. That's, that's what we call foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is happening right now. Foreshadowing. So we'll talk about that when we get to the other part, which we just foreshadowed. Um, next is the attack speed changes we mentioned for a second. Um, Dagger, 15% attack speed instead of 12. Cost, though, is up 50 gold. Um, Berserker Greaves, 25% instead of 20, up 50 gold. Zeal, up 2%. Uh, down 75 down gold. 75 gold. <laughs> I like that, actually. Wit's End, um, up 100 gold, but you get 8% more. This is 50% attack speed. Uh, Yuma's Ghost Blade, active now lasts for 6 seconds on ranged champions as well. Um, it lasted 4 seconds on ranged champions. And six seconds on melee. So, God, I hate you, double lift. So now it's longer. You and your stupid ghost blade I, twitch. I've never. I okay. I'm gonna throw this out there. I don't like you moves on like almost any champion. There's only one I currently am building it on. Rengar. Rengar. But other than that, I just don't like you moves. I just. I don't know. You moves like is, I think, one of the most underrated items in the game. Yeah, I remember using it. It works back on in the day, so but, many champions. I just don't like it that much. I mean, it's so to each his own. essentially. Just what's the cool, what's over the cool what down on its active? Is what? It a minute? What's the it's cool like down on its active? It's like 60 seconds. Yeah. I would, if it was a little bit shorter, I'd probably like it more. I just, I don't know. You can only use what? it once. So what they kind of did was what I would probably do now is buy my blade or my bloodthirster and then just build zeal and leave it at zeal until you get your last whisper and then finish off zeal and into your I static was, ship. I was my, a big fan of already campus. doing that. Actually, well, yeah, but when you're playing like heavy crit champions, it's I so know. good to get a little crit in. Well, when you're playing heavy crit, yeah, when you're playing heavy crit champions, I speed. would, I would just rush the Phantom Dancer. But now, it's so gold efficient, yeah, and you get so much more. Like two percent doesn't sound like a lot, but it helps. When you're when you're losing cost and gaining stats is always a good thing. Yeah, yeah. So. It does help the item out. Um, recipe cleanup. The following items have had the recipe adjusted to deal with the dagger and zeal. Price changes. Their total price remains unchanged. Stinger, fan, sword, mad, wriggle, rude. So I don't Trim. understand why they didn't change all... Like, why didn't all of the attack speed items get I think it's because some of these ones are a little bit weaker. Wit's End has fallen out of meta quite a bit. Um, zeal, I have never understood its cost, actually, for what it gives you. It's not bad, but it's... it's this is not a huge power spike. It's nice, but it's not huge. Yeah. It's it's not the power spike of hey I came back with a BF sword for only you know four hundred gold more, it's you're, so you're not what you're saying is you're not gonna build a zeal over a BF sword yeah exactly so it's not power spike so this is not a huge issue this just makes sense I guess you get five percent whatever fifty gold and berserker greaves are the cheapest boots in the game mm -hmm. I mean it it makes sense honestly you could have probably kept this at four hundred gold and gave him fifteen percent this is not a huge number to me yeah whatever um but i like the changes overall so the next changes we actually have coming to the game are warden's mail and renan's hurricane or omen sorry renan's hurricane renan's uh, omen renan's omen um randuin's omen. hurricane randuin's hurricane i like it we're gonna do it randuin's thorn hurricane um warden's mail the passive cold steel attack speed reduction is now actually only gonna be 10 percent instead of 15 percent and um, Random's Omen, the remove the passive of Cold Steel no longer reduces the attacker's movement speed. It now only reduces their attack speed. So this is a huge change because now you can't just buy Warden's Mail or and Randoman's Omen and completely shut off. Their whole shut team. off, like just zone. Slow ADs. the whole team, especially if they're attacking you. Yeah, expect, uh, the movement speed I didn't even like think about, but it's, like it's big. Yeah, I oh, love yeah, that part of this. You item. can control. Well, look, look what happened. Look what happened to attack or to armor in the last probably about a year and a half. Everybody used to buy Sunfire Cape because it was cheap, effective. It was health. It was armor. It worked. But then everybody started buying Omen. Cost more, but you got more health. You got more armor, and then you can't ever die. Well, I think the Rand, like the one of the rises to Randuins is obviously like Blade being introduced to the game as well. That does help. Like uh, an attack speed based AD carry item. One thing that I didn't see in the like you know kind of the AD carry things is they didn't do any changes to armor penetration. No, I think armor pen's an okay spot right now. 
you can like I don't know it. I feel like Last Whisper is cheap. It is cheap, but at the same time, sometimes you don't just you don't feel like you're doing any damage. I agree. It doesn't feel like a power like, spike. It's like a many, hidden one. How many times did I like message you during LCS from like Shivana cannot be stopped. She like she can't she just be killed. Walks on top of eighty carries. We might see her. that next, but this might actually help with that. Yeah, well, it's a reduction it's in the in the attack speed and the movement speed allows you to hit them more. And then the movement speed will allow you to kite better, obviously. Yeah. So, like, I think this is huge for like the, your the the fur boots or whatever fur boots, the attack speed yeah, 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 you yeah, auto yeah, yeah. someone. Yeah. Because fervor, I don't know what they're fervor, are. fervor, whatever. Those boots, In because now you're going to be able to kite those huge tanks for long distances. Yeah. So We'll see how it plays. Maybe they'll adjust those in the future. But the problem is, if you just buff Last Whisper, you make other champions like Rengar more broken. Uh, let's be real. The One of my biggest surprises with this patch is Rengar was not included. I agree. And Rengar the funny thing is, right now, everybody her. thinks Rengar is super, super weak. If and you're in... Yeah. Easily the most overpowered champion in the game. He might be one of them, yes. Who is more OP, OP than Rengar? Hold on. Quiz, go. Maybe Jax? Maybe, maybe I was going to say maybe Jax. Cassadin? Yeah, no. It was, LeBlanc would have been there, the silence helps, and Nidalee with the changes. Now this, yeah, he's up there now. But, no, he's what totally... I'm saying is LeBlanc, like, LeBlanc has to get the jump on you to kill you because most AD carries have some form of gap, like, extender, like, Graves has his E, and, you know, everybody has that, like, Lucian has his E. Quinn. So, it's Quinn. Quinn. Quinn has her vault, but that yeah. puts her closer. <laughs> I hate Quinn. But, um, so, the thing with Rengar is, they need to make it so if he's within like half the map of you, you get that little exclamation point over your head because right now if he gets enough stacks, he can literally like it's like you see the exclamation point and you're dead. It's like that. I, I just I like it. Yeah, half change. half the map. Like like uh, you get what I'm saying. Pantheon like, ultimate it, sized. Yeah. Just no, I, to I totally like that idea. I'm not even kidding. Or it's or like not. it's like the twisted fate warning when he alts. Yeah, so you know that he's... You know, you, you know what they also need to do? They need to make his... Uh, they need to nerf Twisted Fate. I'm tired of seeing that guy. They need, to, they need to nerf his passive. His jumping out of the bush. I talked about this last time. They need to make it cooldown based if he keeps doing it out of the same bush. If he keeps walking into a different bush, then it refreshes. I'm fine with that. But if he keeps jumping in and out of the same bush, he shouldn't keep jumping out of it constantly. Stupid. Well, since we're talking about AD carries... It doesn't really matter because he's just going to jump from his ulti and kill you. That's true. It's still stupid. I'm just saying that would help his laning, which would help him oh, not yeah. snowball as hard. Yeah. Next. There's, oh. there's very few champions who can fire anger on lane. It's not easy. And even if you build armor, he always builds armor pen because that's how his build works. Yep. So it doesn't matter. Next, we have changes to the support and ability power itemization. Um, first, we have a new item called the Ardent Sensor. Your heals and shields, or on another unit, grant them 25% attack speed for 6 seconds. Unique passive, 8% movement speed, you get 30 ability power, you get 10 mana per 5 seconds, 10% cooldown reduction, its total cost is 2200 gold. And the recipe is the Forbidden Idol, and the Arthur Wick, and 550 gold. And then um, to subsequent these changes, Forbidden Idol, which was added not too long ago, is going to be cheaper. At 700 gold instead of 750. And along with these changes comes our foreshadowing moment. Which is the Mikhail's Crucible. Its total cost is going massively up to 2450 from 1600. It no longer builds um, from just the chalice and gold. It's chalice plus a forbidden idol plus 870 gold. Um, its mana regen is going to be increased and it will give you some cooldown reduction now. Um, to subsequent for some of those costs. But Mikkel's is one of the dirt cheap items that gives you an amazing passive. If you don't know it's passive because you don't build it, well, there's your first mistake. You should be building it. But um, it's passive is you can cleanse a friendly target and give them a shit ton of health. And then they're fine. So what they've done is it's not completely on the support to technically get this now, although I'll still say this looks like a good item. I mean, because it's a good item. Um, it just doesn't do as much. It, it you, you're really paying for the for the passive on it, but now it's going up above is that mercurial scimitar where you have the cleanse, 
with the Quicksilver Sash movement. built into it. And then you got more attack damage now from it, too. And you get that movement speed. So, if you want double cleanse... I actually really like the Allah. Ardent tier, or like the Ardent, Ardent item. Just, Sensa. Sensa. Just because it... I like this is a very very creative way to buff champions that aren't in meta right now. It is because like Soraka, Sona, are like Who actually yeah, Nami. Been a rise, but yeah. But like if you think about it, like if you build any mana regen or mana on all like, those this has it in it on Sona, yep. you're literally gonna have twenty five percent attack speed the entire time. Yeah. And so, and it's got a good passive that I think all healers could utilize from, which is that movement speed. Yeah. All the so, healers really need movement speed. Because they have to stop it, to heal. It is a little bit pricey, though, because that's a, that's a, that's a lot of 2200 isn't terrible. But you're thinking you're going to get a Sight Stone, you're going to get Tier 1 boots. So they're, like, right Sightstone, there. Sight Stone, Tier 1, and maybe a couple upgrades of your um, coin. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's that's what? It's but if you were 16, But if you were worried about gold. mana issues, you could pick up the Forbidden Idol for 700, and you got mana and movement speed right there. 1700 gold though and then you have to spend and that's 2200 on top of that so you're essentially so you need, gonna have to get 4000 gold i don't know we'll see we'll see how it works so yeah i i, I like the item i like the the idea behind it but, but at the does same it time have a it's a little bit too costly yeah for we'll my see. tastes um and then finally locket of the iron solari active shield amount is now calculated using the recipe champion level if that whatever this is kind of useful just because a lot of times supports get very, very behind in levels. Yeah. And so now it'll be calculated off the AD carry or yeah. someone else's level instead of yours. So it's going to be a bigger shield ideologically. So now with changes to other things, the ability power items in the game are going to be touched. First, we have the Athenes and Holy Grail. The magic resist is actually going to be decreased. The mana regeneration is going to be decreased. And it's passive mana restore on killer assist is actually going to be increased um it's kind of unfortunate for that item but everybody does buy it yeah it's the first item for a lot of people and then morella namicon's ability power is actually going to go up but it's mana regeneration is going to go slightly down not by a ton. you don't see a ton of nom nom namicons running um, around this might prevent a little so. bit of spam from certain champions but i don't think these are huge huge changes most most mid laners get blue buff, so yeah. the the mana regen is not that big of a deal, but the magic resist is kind of a big deal. Yeah, that's kind in, of a in mid lane. It's gonna happen. So, Can't yeah. change it. Next to summon our spells, teleport. Cooldown when teleporting to towers is now two hundred forty seconds instead of two hundred. Uh, kind of. Whatever. Not that big of a deal. A lot of people ran teleport top to teleport back to lane, but obviously the best use of teleport is to in other like to go to other lanes and gank. Yeah. Um, which this has no effect on, so no. it's kind of meh. Yeah. Next is heal. Um, speed boost duration is now only one second, not two. I love how all the all the heal nerfs that have been coming in have been so predicted when they buffed heal to make it how insane it was like three patches ago. The double heal got nerfed. The and double then heal the remove ignite. Yeah, just, room. Yeah, yeah. That was stupid. Got nerfed and now that, like I honestly think that you should probably start taking barrier again on eighty carries. It might be worth it. So. Although you both get the passive move speed, so uh, And you both get the heal, but and you both get the heal. And then on exhaust bug fixed. Yeah. Whatever. Just an assist. Bug fix, so. Next on the Mastery's Reinforced Armor Tooltip clarified to state that it reduces the total damage from critical strikes. Just cool stuff. Up. Yes! Dragon yes! changes on the Summoner's Rift. Base gold is being increased and its gold per level is being decreased. Yes! <laughs> so, if anybody's wondering why I'm celebrating, like this is it's purely LCS based, but people were taking Dragon at like three minutes and thirty seconds in LCS because the AD carry and support were in the top lane for the other team. Yeah. So this is gonna make it a little bit like they're level what three or four, so it's gonna be around two hundred and ten gold for 
day that's, dragon it's, at that level, so it's going to force it's a, it to be a 2v2 bottom lane. It's easily a 1,000 gold for the enemy team for free. Yeah, and, instead and of timer. 500. Yeah. So... A big deal now to give up the dragon <laughs> instead of... Instead of letting them take it. Yeah, instead Maybe of letting them take it. So I like this change. Hopefully it fixes it and we get some standard lanes because I like standard lanes a lot more than double jungles. Two V nuns, yeah. I agree. Crap. So I wanna, where nothing happens. I wanna see good laners beat other good laners. Yeah. Ranked Let's duo queue. Magic. Players may only queue for ranked duo games with players ranked within one full tier above or below them. For example, a silver three player may duo with players ranked anywhere from bronze five to gold one. I to be honest, I don't I don't know that people did that. Um, Unseeded players were ranked in solo queue for previous seasons that ranked to determine dual eligibility. Unseeded players who have never been ranked in solo queue are able to duo queue with gold, silver, or bronze. Yeah, I don't I don't you don't see often a diamond with a silver. Or a diamond with a bronze or a, you you'll see it occasionally like on Smurfs and stuff like that, where people don't really care about MMR. But like it's this only gonna affect a few people who are trying to break the system. Yeah, that was Pooksy Boo, um, boy boy's girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was mean. Um, so I thought that th they should have had this in the in the game when they brought out the tier system. So um, yeah, just kind of nice. Yeah, I agree. Team builder. Team captain now able to see list of suggested players that they are able to invite to their games. We'll be experimenting with this feature. To so now is it going to be like you're going to have a list of people that you can invite instead of just like waiting, 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 and then like just a random person pops up and you click yay or nay. So yeah. it'll, be a, it'll be like a list and you'll be like, oh, I want that one. Like, no, I don't want Timo. I want that Quinn. That'd be interesting. I don't know. We'll have to see how that works. I feel like team builder was like really, really nice and like an idea, but it just takes so long to find a supporter like a jungler or something. Some of that does it's take just, a while, yeah. Yeah, that it just kind of ruins the game type, so. Uh, bug fixes players who use their keyboard to purchase from the shop should no longer see the shop close when a purchase fails. Fixed a bug where players would occasionally need to unlock the camera twice for the setting to apply. I've actually had that one. That one's so annoying. The camera so... like locks on me and it like won't unlock it. I'm like, why will you unlock? Stop! I hate you. Um. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Oh no. Upcoming skins. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the League of Draven. We have the All Star, the soccer team, the World Cup skin. Which, let's be real, Lucian looks like a baller, and then the rest of the champions, no one plays except for Twisted Fate. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah, it looks really good though. I hope they do the like. It obviously looks like it, they did the layering again, mm -hmm. um, so the so the uh, splash art won't be all screwed up like it was in the SKT mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But it looks good. It does. And then next is Primetime Draven. Something that I would have wished that they would have done with this skin is like. Did you see this skin previously? Yeah. Well, like I I saw it in like the skin spotlight or like the what are they? Did they you see it? where it was hiding previously? What do you mean? I will show you. But anyway, like I wish that they what they could have done was like take little like snippets and give them a whole like bunch of lines for jokes and stuff and like had like freaks like say have him say freaks like it, something in freaks voice and have him say something in Jat's voice and have him say something in Yeah, that actually know. that would be kind of cool. Actually. I don't know any of the European guys or so any of the European guys. I think one's like Demficio or something. Demficio, yeah. Something dumb. It's in there? Yeah, check it out. No. He's right here. Oh my god. Look, it's Draven, guys. It's Draven. Riot always leaves hints in a lot of the splash things. Um, Creator Victor. Um, Felcos is in the background of it. The whole time. Well, let's look at these. We got a little Poro over there. I don't see anything in there. No. Got nothing. And I got nothing on the Draven one either. You're, yeah, but I'm just being like, yeah. yeah the, I yeah. mean, they do that a lot. Um, yeah. Which is Hopefully really cool that you can. Though. I mean, because now that I look at it, I'm like, yeah, that's so blatantly obvious that Draven, like, or you know, somebody, it stands out so 
so can much. I say so? I hope people don't get mad at me when I say this because everybody loves Draven. I love like the belt looks really cool, but why did they give him blonde hair and he still has brown eyebrows and mustache? It's because it looks like somebody who dyes their hair for camera. I don't, guys. See how it's the same? That's all natural. It's all natural. So, I like there's how a lot of stuff whatever I asked stash. to load apparently will not load. But yeah, um, so that's cool that they do this type of stuff. There might be even something else hidden that we don't see until later, which. I mean, it happens. Sometimes I wonder if they like just go back and replace all the pictures that they had posted. Oh, I got it. There we go. Here, here. Here's the original. If it loads as it says it is. Really? What the hell is it? That's the tiniest one ever. Yeah, hold on. Oh, there you go. It's, it's 1080. Man, I don't know about All right, see, so right, he's right here. Him. Yeah, I see. I've, I've seen that But before. I mean, like, nobody noticed. People noticed it a little bit, but they're like, oh... Kogma. He's in the Matrix. Kogma, is Kogma's battle cast out? No. Yeah, it is. Is it? I don't know. I don't play Kogma. Uh, you should. Kogma's going to be a top fight ADK now. <laughs> Urgot? Kidding. Does Urgot have battle cast? Yes. Yes. I don't know. I don't play those two champions. Well, that's because no one plays those two champions. That's because they're bad. And then there's this Skarn right here. See this thing right here? Battle cast Skarn. Is there a battle cast on I Once again, it's hidden back here on purpose. That could be a lot of things. But there's your... There's your yeah. Veli Vel. Um, but yeah, Vel. they actually updated this splash art and, and and removed some of the haze right before he was announced officially. So um, that's what Riot does. So go back and look at things. You might see things you never thought you could unsee. So what is that? Mm -hmm. Is that patch notes? That is patch notes. That's patch notes. That was the longest patch ever, I think. Actually, it's like. just actually not as long as one of the ones we've had before. We've had longer. Um, the, but the Gragas one? <sighs> that was a really long patch notes, too. But, uh, yeah, that's patch. There's some important changes. One, zero. See how things work in the future. Um, it'll be Italy's interesting. going to be interesting. Skarner's going to be useless. IMO. Probably. Stupid ultimate. Um, first Big items, things to take away. First Big items on champions away. might be different. Yep. On ADCs, Twitch. at least. Twitch isn't going to be top flight anymore, I don't think. LeBlanc is going to be counterable now. Although the attack speed changes do help Twitch out. Yeah, but just like the... I don't know. We'll see. It, yeah, it could, it could change, I guess. So. Maybe that's part of that true damage thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's patch notes. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you had fun. We had fun. Um, uh, yeah. What do we? Yeah. Uh, check out Kyle's channel. Subscribe. Like videos. Do things. Watch more. Um, and until next time, you guys. We'll just see y'all later. Later. Bye.